Paper. We use it every day. As important as it is to us, we take it for granted. But it wasn't always that way. Around 105 AD, Kai Lun of the Eastern Han Dynasty revolutionized communication by inventing papermaking, enabling the preservation of historical records and advancing the study of human achievements across generations. Enter Wilhelm Rittenhouse, an apprentice papermaker born in Germany, who emigrated to the newly formed colonies in the late 1600s with his wife Gertrude and their three children. The paper mill was up and running along the banks of the Monoshone, now known as Paper Mill Run. The location was selected for several reasons, first of which was its proximity to Germantown, where artisans and weavers grew flax, whose linens were used for paper pulp. Though the string doesn't move as much today, Wilhelm was able to determine at the time it could provide enough power for the wheel that ran the mill, which produced beautiful white paper. The Rittenhouse family also chose the Germantown area because it was home to a thriving Mennonite community, and Wilhelm would go on to become the first Mennonite minister in America. The area around the mill grew up around the Rittenhouse family at what started as a 20-acre land lease, including a hosiery mill and a carpet mill. Over time, the site expanded to encompass approximately 200 acres by the time of the Rittenhouse family's second or third generation. At its peak, the site boasted around 40 structures. The Rittenhouses thrived in this industrious community, accompanied by various ancillary structures that included a school, tenement housing for both part-time and full-time laborers, a church, and even a quarry. The Rittenhouses held a virtual monopoly on paper production in Philadelphia for roughly three decades. The first permanent structure, the homestead, took shape in 1707 while Wilhelm was still heading up mill operations, gradually ceding the papermaking reins to his son Klaus. Born here in 1732, the best known Rittenhouse family member, third generation David Rittenhouse, lived here until about the age of four. Renowned for his skills as a clockmaker, astronomer, engineer, and overall intellect, David was appointed by George Washington as the first president of the U.S. Mint and formed a close relationship with the founding fathers. In 1825, the center city Philadelphia neighborhood known as Southwest Square was renamed Rittenhouse Square in David's honor. By the mid-1800s, Philadelphia's water supply faced dire contamination issues. The connection between Paper Mill Run and Wissahickon Creek, a key tributary of the Schuylkill River, highlighted the vital role of the Rittenhouse property in protecting the city's drinking water. The milling industry leaves the Wissahickon Valley as steam water power takes over, mainly along the Philadelphia waterfront. In 1867, the city of Philadelphia established the Fairmount Park Commission and began purchasing old mill sites in order to preserve the water, prompting the family's relocation to Germantown and neighboring towns, with some venturing beyond Pennsylvania. From 1880 to 1983, the homes in Rittenhouse Village are occupied by Fairmount Park staff, employees, and their families, including the mounted cavalry that patrolled all of the Wissahickon. With the final departure of Fairmount Park staff living on site, the buildings went vacant. The 1976 Bicentennial celebrations renewed Philadelphia's interest in its historic structures. A wave of renovations and restorations transpired throughout the city and Rittenhouse Town was no exception. The historic Homestead Building, one of the city's oldest, underwent needed restoration at that time. By 1983, a call to preserve the history of this place resulted in the establishment of Historic Rittenhouse Town, Inc., led by the efforts of Hugh Hansen, a retiree of the paper industry who became fond of the village. The nonprofit emerged as a pivotal force, ensuring the continued preservation of the buildings and landscape.
For those unfamiliar, Rittenhouse Town may look like a quaint private street owned by a local wealthy constituency, but this 20-acre public space is connected to the nearby Wissahickon Trail system and sees hundreds of passerby each day. The nonprofit is committed to the preservation of its buildings, managing native and invasive plant species, education around the centuries-old art of papermaking, and welcoming new and returning visitors. <laughs>